Hickok 45, you know, there's nothing worse than having a bulldog after you, unless it's having two bulldogs after you. Okay, I was not taking sight pictures, so forgive my mistake. <laughs> yeah, Hickok 45, I got a couple of Bulldogs with empty uh, cases in the cylinder. So let's take a look at these. Well, we've already taken a look at this one, so we're just going to put him aside pretty much. That's a Bulldog. That's a new one. Guess what, though? You could probably tell from the title. Charter Arms started making the classic Bulldog again. I didn't even know it. I was so clueless. I really didn't. Someone uh, suggested uh, a little while ago, hey, won't you do a video on the classic Bulldog, really? And I went to look at their, their website and, oh, they're making that thing again. And I guess they have for a year or two. So cool. I had one of these. I think I mentioned it in the first video, you know, on that Bulldog. Uh, about it. In fact, I told you all about that. So I'm not going to belabor all that. I will link to that first video, even though this is not a chapter two, it's a different firearm. Uh, this is the classic uh, 44 Bulldog. Uh, you know, you can look at that one for all that information if you've not seen it. But uh, yeah, they're making the classic Bulldog that they made in the 70s and 80s. The one I had, I talked about a lot. It has a truck gun and everything. And uh, I always liked it. I let it get away. There's just something special about the thing. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended, 44 special. Uh, let's see, I'll shoot a couple hand loads then I'll get some of the uh, federal ammo in here. Hollow points, okay? I've been loading 44 special for a long time, both jacketed and, and uh, just 240 grain hard cast bullets. And so I always have 44 special ammo. That's not a problem. But uh, I didn't have my little charger arms for so many years. So I'm gonna shoot a couple more here. Now it's, it's kind of cold and this thing does kick a little bit. I'm not gonna shoot a lot. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I'll cock this one. Cock the hammer. Boom. So that's what you get with a double action. You can actually cock the hammer. Boom. Roll 44. Let's take another bowling pin out if I can. Oh, I missed it. It's beginning to hurt already. That's one advantage of the rubber grips. Uh, now part of that's because it's cold and partly because I'm a wimp, but yeah, you can feel those wooden grips coming back at you. <laughs> oh man, you, you may have seen this. I showed it in a, I guess the last shooting the breeze or uh, whatever the most recent shooting the breeze as of today was i pulled it out and showed you i had just purchased it uh, yeah i uh when when uh the person messaged me about it and wanted uh, us to do a video i went and looked around and saw it was available i went to the buds uh all right if i get a little shaved lead in there from one of those hand loads it could cause problems i'm gonna go down here and uh take out, do this uh, pot smoking. Do a little pot smoking. Look at that squirrel. He's not afraid of me, is he? All right. Pot smoke right now. Oh. <laughs> nice. Ouch, that thing kicks. See if I can hit a two liter. All right. Oh, when you know it, I missed it, and I don't have another bullet. I'll come back and get those cases, because I load those for sure. Uh, I don't even have my pocket pistol with me. I took it out uh, a few minutes ago. So yeah, the Bulldog, uh, well, I'm going to shoot a couple more times. Uh, I'm not going to shoot a lot. It, it is not a firearm. You know, by and large, the uh, Charter Arms, I don't view them as, as range guns that you're going, speaking of that. Yeah, I'm making up excuses, rationalizing why I don't want to hurt my hand anymore. Uh, I really don't view a Charter Arms generally as a firearm to go enjoy all day at the range. Especially one this light in 44. It, it's not. It's not fun to shoot it a great deal. It, it's not. But I mean, it's shootable and it's okay. But it does kick. And uh, if you're going to shoot it a lot, you really do want those rubber grips on it. And they help some, okay? And you know, I did get kind of dirty in there with those uh, other rounds. All right. 
uh, it just it just hits you. And I'm going to show you the, how I had to work on those uh, grips too a little bit. Okay, I'm going to get this uh, two later. I might just attack him. I might just attack attack that guy too. Yeah. Go. I better not shoot too close to that cowboy. I'm going to back up a little bit and I'm going to pop him because I don't like him. All right, dead center. Double action. Ah, see, it works. Uh, even though it kicks a fair amount because it's so light, what it's designed for, as I have demonstrated before, carefully get that thing back in the holster there. It is for, uh, you know, close and dirty. click it's for a situation where you're not going to be shooting long long range although if you recall in the first video with the other bulldog i popped the gong a couple times i don't know if i've even shot at the gong with this one yet but uh you know they will they will hit long range but they're not designed for that of course all right you'll notice a couple of things on this one since it's mine if they're going back for the e-gunner auction at buds i don't i, I want to you know be <laughs> be nice to them and not customize them, of course, but on this one, I have painted the front side already. Okay, so I don't want to mess up someone else's front side, so I don't do that. And then also, the uh, the wood, the, the fit on the, the finish on the, the wood was not all that great. It was really a very sharp edge right there on both sides. And I took a Dremel tool and rounded that off, so that's not a problem now. Okay, I mean, still, it's just wood, and it comes back at you a little bit. Wood's hard. And uh, so you don't get any kind of cushioning there at all. But so those are a couple of things I have done to it. There again, as I've said before in the other video, I'll shoot a couple of jacket rounds. They're not they're not Smith and Wessons. They're not Colts, but uh, they're not bad. And uh, they typically have a pretty good reputation. You're asking a lot out of out of these these pistols because the 44 is a big round, and it's got basically the same ballistics as I always point out of a 45 ACP. And uh, they're really light. And that's probably one reason, you know, the other major companies, if you know, Smith and Colt and everybody, uh, they just choose not to make a firearm in this big caliber this light. It's a little unusual. And it's something a lot of people maybe don't want any part of. They're, they're just they're light firearms and you're firing a big round. I'll fire a couple more here. I can handle it, I'm tough. All right. Let's put him in the holster again. All right, nifty little firearm. It, it just really is. Even though it does kick, it's just nifty. Boom. Let's put one on the gong or sling, sling one over there at least. Yeah, I don't know. I might have been going high. I think I probably was. Seems like I did shoot one over there and, and realize I need to hold down. The recoil on it is probably flipping the bullet upward a little bit before it even gets out the barrel. I'll try it gong again. I'll hold a little bit lower. Oh, I saw that one. I saw that one. Okay, I need to hold up on the gong, looks like. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I, I, I bet you y'all might see it in the video. I was probably shooting left. That's easy to do with this thing. So yeah, the sights are pretty much right on, looks like. Is that a drink right there I missed? Yeah, <laughs> I got one more bullet. And I think the cowboy who has not been shot deserves some lead. Yeah, right in the center. All right. Uh, you might have guessed I like 44 Special, and uh, obviously uh, it didn't take much. I'm, I'm a little bit random and uh, impulsive, I guess, at, at sometimes. Uh, like I say, I, someone messaged me about this. I went to look. I said, "Yeah, they make that again. Cool, so cool." I missed the one I had, and uh, 
And so I looked around and I went to Buzz and yep, order. I had the thing on the way, you know, just a matter of probably of two or three minutes after getting that message, because I just have always missed it. And uh, I don't know, I've actually carried it some uh, already this winter. And uh, again, when I'm in a revolver mood, uh, there's just something pretty cool about having 44 caliber, you know, 200, 240 grain rounds on your side, even though it's just five. Uh, it's just a neat little gun. It really is. Uh, 44 Special. It uh, has a, a really strong following among some people. I'm kind of one of those followers, I'll have to say. As I said in the earlier video, the biggest uh, deficiency is just the capacity, you know. And uh, and I'm willing to, to suffer the recoil and uh, of, of this lightweight firearm, tell you the truth, but it's still the capacity that kind of bothers you at times. So can I shoot just a couple more as we as we let you go? Okay, put some more of these uh, Federals in here. Again, we appreciate Federal sending this 44 Special Ammo, which can be kind of expensive if you can find it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, they're seating just fine now. I had a little lead hang up in there, I guess, earlier. Well, this is a little speed strip. You can get those even in 44. Pretty cool, huh? So when I'm carrying this, I, I have that in my off pocket usually. I don't know who makes that. That's not Bianchi. You know, they make the ones. They're famous for these. This is Quick, quick Strip or something. I don't even know where I got it. All right. Oh, shoot the tree. Knocks it around. Pretty nice. That white paint on the front sight makes all the difference in the world. So, uh, like I said, go back to the other video if you want to learn more about the, the Bulldog, the history of it, and all that kind of thing. But uh, this was kind of their classic uh, Bulldog. That's why they call it the classic in the blued version, three inch barrel. The other one over there is two and a half. I like the three inch barrel better. I'm a three inch barrel kind of guy. I just love uh, big caliber, well, even smaller caliber uh, revolvers in uh, three inch barrels. You know, I've got the 686 in three eights. I've got a couple of 680, you know, uh, 629s, three inch barrel. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. I shoot a lot of 44 uh, special out of those, uh, in fact. So the Charter Arms Bulldog Classic is just that, a classic. Thought I'd bring it to you. Uh, since I had to have one, life is good. Since I'm still here, let me go ahead and thank SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, uh, for their support of the channel. If you're not familiar with them, they uh, do distance learning, they're fully accredited. You can get a, a certification in gunsmithing there. You can even get an associate degree in firearms technology and you can go on to do a lot of different things with that, you know, if you're interested. So, uh, you know, there's hands-on training and everything. So check the link in the description, sdi.edu, and, uh, you know, check it out. I do a lot of work with veterans, so it might be uh, of, of some interest to you. So check that out. And also keep in mind while I've got you, while I'm still here, that we are on Full 30 now. All our videos are over on Full30.com and there's a link uh, in the video descriptions to that as well. So, you know, watch us wherever you like to. YouTube, Full 30, better yet, both. <laughs> and, uh, and keep in mind that uh, we have the Hickok 45 and Sun channel. Uh, John does a lot of things over there. I do some things over there, some Hickok history, different things. Uh, we've got the Hickok 45 uh, Facebook page. We do a lot on that. There's 400,000 uh, people following that. I hope you're one of them. Uh, the Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page. Uh, so we've got a lot going on there. We've got the Gun Culture Radio uh, show that John does. Now I'm on that show sometimes uh, over on Hickok 45 and Sun. So just wanted to make you aware of everything that's going on in case you might not be familiar with it. Okay. And You'd better start getting familiar with it because if you don't, I'm going to come to your house and have a chat with you. You don't want that to happen. And if I do, you'd better have good donuts and good coffee waiting for me. Okay?